Okay, um, I decided that it probably would be a good idea to do some of this pituitary adrenal gland stuff um, ahead of time. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know, I guess I'm thinking, I don't know, I might do 30 hours or 30 hours. Yeah, let's do 30 hours of this. No, I was thinking 30 minutes. Um, anyway, you'll have uh, time. The other stuff, pancreas didn't take that long. Um, it took about 60 minutes, I think. So, we're going to start talking about nursing management of patients with pituitary and adrenal gland problems. Um, the pituitary gland is also called the hypothesis, and you will notice that it is located beneath and attached to the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus has neurons in it, and those neurons uh, get input from the brain stem and the limbic system. Here's your brain stem. Okay, your limbic system is kind of all in here. And it influences, the hypothalamus influences the limbic system, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. This creates a circuit that facilitates the coordination of the, of the endocrine system, the autonomic nervous system, and it um, helps to facilitate the expression of complex behavioral responses like anger and fear and pleasure. Now the hypothalamus secretes a lot of hormones. There are two important groups. They're called releasing and inhibiting hormones and those either will stimulate or they will inhibit the secretion of hormones from the anterior pituitary. The hypothalamus is considered the master gland. Um, it shares a closed small circulatory system with the anterior pituitary gland and that's called um, the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. That allows hormones produced in the hypothalamus to travel directly to the anterior pituitary. So, your hypothalamic nerve cells from your hypothalamus um, goes straight to the anterior pituitary through this capillary portal system. Okay? The anterior pituitary, also called the adenohypophysis, has various hormones in it. Um, when you look at the pituitary gland as a whole, the anterior pituitary is 70 to 80 percent of this gland by weight. The posterior pituitary is the remaining 20 to 30 percent. Some of the hormones that the anterior pituitary gland secretes include growth hormone, Um, adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH, thyroid stimulating hormone, gonadotropic hormones, both FSH and LH, prolactin, um, there's some lesser hormones uh, like um, the melanocyte stimulating hormone, and the anterior pituitary will secrete these hormones that I've mentioned in response to hormones of the hypothalamus. The hormones of the hypothalamus that produce these anterior pituitary hormone secretions include the corticotropin releasing hormone, which then causes the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, the thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus causes TSH to be released, the gonadotropin releasing hormone causes gonadotropic hormone to be released from the anterior pituitary. You have growth hormone releasing hormones from the hypothalamus. You have, you also have growth hormone um, inhibiting hormone, 
that's released from the hypothalamus, prolactin inhibiting hormone, and melanocyte inhibiting hormone. So the hypothalamus will release a hormone and it then will tell the anterior pituitary to release its hormone and then those hormones go to organs and produce a response at the hormone. All right, most of the anterior pituitary hormones are tropic hormones and a tropic hormone is a hormone that regulates the activity of endocrine glands. Those endocrine glands then produce hormones that affect target organs. There are some non-trophic hormones that directly stimulate target cells to induce their infect. A couple examples would be growth hormone. Growth hormone is a non-trophic hormone released by the anterior pituitary and it will stimulate the release of insulin-like growth factors from the liver and other organs. Um, prolactin is a non-trophic hormone and it produces milk let down in females and it indirectly affects testosterone secretion in males. But again, most of the hormones of the anterior pituitary are tropic hormones. Tropic means that the hormone regulates the activity of an endocrine gland and that endocrine gland then produces the hormone that will affect the target organ. Now, the posterior pituitary, that's this part over here. Um, the posterior pituitary is also called the neural hypothesis. The anterior pituitary is sometimes called the adenohypothesis. The posterior pituitary called the neural hypothesis. And the two main hormones that are posterior pituitary hormones include vasopressin. The other name for vasopressin is ADH. ADH stimulates the hormone. I'm sorry, I didn't say that right. ADH stimulates the kidney tubules and produces an antidiuretic effect, namely it causes the kidneys to hang on to water. Um, the other posterior pituitary hormone is oxytocin. Um, the posterior pituitary is really just an extension of the hypothalamus. Communication between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary occurs very directly through nerve tracts called the median eminence. Your posterior pituitary hormones, of the, that would be ADH and oxytocin, they're actually produced up here in the hypothalamus. And then they travel to the posterior pituitary for storage until their release is trigger, triggered by an appropriate stimuli. There's some interesting research that goes on um, as we consider uh, the hormones and how they work and we compare them to various animal, animal models, um, but eh, I don't think I'll go there. All right, so now that you kind of have an idea of what um, these various hormones do, remember you have releasing hormones from the hypothalamus, releasing a um, tropic hormone or a non-tropic hormone from the anterior pituitary, which then, for the most part, the tropic hormones go to an organ and then release hormone from there. You have a couple non-tropic hormones like growth hormone and prolactin that go directly to an organ to produce their results. I need to stop here and go on to section two.